today's Farm Basics, we're going to discuss a biofuel called ethanol. So ethanol can be made out of a number of different grains and for that matter even cellulose. But in the United States today, ethanol is predominantly coming from corn. So as a corn farmer who delivers his corn to an ethanol plant, I can speak pretty firsthand to this. And I can just tell you that the, the number one thing that I, I think about whenever people mention ethanol is I think about all the non-farmers who have misconceptions about it. The number one thing that people will say is, well, I'm worried about it hurting my engine. What? No, it's not gonna hurt your engine. In fact, you can run even pretty high levels of ethanol. We've run a lot of E30 in our vehicles for years and years. Uh, I go back probably five, six years ago, the Minnesota Corn Growers Association did a big study. They found that the most economical, energy efficient fuel to use was E30. So in the United States today, yeah, there are a lot of people using E10. Now quite a few people are using E15, but E30 is really the way to go. So that's what I'm running in my vehicles. But you just have to take a look at, can my vehicle handle ethanol? In almost all cases, the answer is yes. In other countries, they run the same engines and are running more ethanol, like Brazil, for example. I was in Brazil a couple of times over the last decade, and they run typically at least a 20% ethanol blend, if not higher, depending on how much ethanol they had. They're very concerned about being energy independent, which I think is pretty interesting, and I'd like to see our country that way as well. The other big thing I always talk to people about is, look, ethanol, before it's denatured at least, you can actually drink it. Whereas with gasoline, if you drink even a tiny little bit, you're dead. So when we talk about safety of ethanol, period, it is so much safer for everyone. That's really got to be a big issue as we move forward. Well, greenhouse gas emissions as well, much less with ethanol. The, the profile of it, environmentally speaking, is it's very, fantastic. very good. And it's coming from a renewable source, which is another big plus that we aren't going to run out of corn. We've got plenty and we can raise more. You look at America's corn farmers, for example, and see how many more bushels per acre we're raising each year. Uh, and we're doing it uh, across the country. It's been fantastic. So even in the uh, western corn, the extreme western corn belt, we're raising some yields now that would rival some of the central corn belt states that have long thought to be the corn kings. Okay, so a lot of people talk about food versus fuel. That's a bunch of nonsense, okay? There's no such thing as food versus fuel. It's food and fuel. Because with ethanol, all we're taking out of that corn to produce ethanol is the starch. Okay, that's it. We're leaving all the vitamins, all the nutrients, that's still in there. That gets fed to livestock. So all you really need to do, if you thought about it, is just replace that starch with some other starch you can get out of the field. Just take some of the residue that's laying on the soil surface of almost corn all stocks. corn fields once you get done. It's no big deal. In fact, a lot of farmers we talk to, they refer to that residue as trash. They want to get rid of at least a portion of it. That's all you'd have to do. Put that back together with the distiller's grain, the byproduct of ethanol, and you're right back to 100% where you started. Well, as you can tell, Brian and I are pretty passionate about ethanol. It's something that, as we mentioned, our own corn from our farm is going to ethanol production. We've got livestock right around us that's being fed the distiller's grains, which are the byproduct of ethanol production. And we've seen the whole system work very well with this renewable fuel. And again, I'd mentioned the safety. I think that's a real huge thing that doesn't get talked about enough with ethanol versus gasoline. Well, you're gonna need some sort of fuel to get out in the field and stop our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 